Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Destination Next, a series of programs which will explore new and exciting places around the Greater Toronto area. I'm your host, Bilal Tahir, but I'm not the only one on this exciting journey. With me, I have my fellow explorers. And you are watching Destination Next. A new destination, what fascination. We'll go exploring a new creation. See to feel our travel around the world. See to feel our travel around the world. So here we go, a new destination. Some inspiration, a little agitation. We'll complication, we'll push our minds for some formulation. We'll go exploring a new destination. Destination next. In this show, us kids will travel on the GTA to learn about the environment that surrounds us. Exploring is promoting the Jamaat because in the Holy Quran, Allah had laid great emphasis on traveling. Say, travel in the earth and see how he originated the creation. Then will Allah provide the latter creation. Surely, Allah has power over all things. Today we drove down to Ripley's Aquarium, which is all the way in downtown Toronto, Ontario. We had a long journey today because this aquarium is 47 kilometers away from the Bath Summer Mosque in Vaughan. But I know it'll be worth it once we go in. Hi, Matt. Hey there. So, how are you? I'm very good. How about yourself? Good, too. So, what do you do here? I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. All right. Well, let's get started. You ready to see some sharks? Yeah. All right. All right, guys, we're going to start in Canadian waters. So the reason why some of these exhibits here seem a little dark is because we're actually mimicking the natural light from their environments. So over time, the lights will start to get brighter as it becomes daytime for them. All right, guys, so right here, this is the kelp forest. So what you can see here is you'll notice that the kelp actually looks a little bit more like plastic. And the reason for that is because it is. It's a synthetic uh, natural plastic that we have here. And the reason why we don't have real kelp is because it grows at such a fast rate that we would have to be trimming it daily. And so we've done this just to mimic what the actual kelp would look like in the wild. But if it was real, we'd have to be in there every single day uh, trimming it up. <laughs> all right, so our next stop is going to be Rainbow Reef. And that's just before the dangerous lagoon of all of our sharks and turtles and sawfish. So you were asking, why is the dangerous lagoon dangerous? So it's not exactly dangerous. It's just kind of a funny name we've given it. Most of the sharks in there are actually really quite friendly. What's that sound? All right, guys, so right here we have the Rainbow Reef. And I'm sure you can tell how it got its name. There's tons of colors in this tank here. Uh, there's over a thousand fish in this tank altogether and over a hundred different species. All right, guys, so our next stop is gonna be the Dangerous Lagoon. So I know you've all been waiting for this. There's tons of sharks in here. Uh, we have sawfish. And if you can spot them, there's two green sea turtles. Green sea turtles are the largest hard-shelled turtles in the world. They can live to the age of 80 and can weigh as much as 400 pounds. So why are they called green? They get their name from the green color of their body fat, which is caused by their green diet. They're the only species of turtles that are herbivores, after all. This fat is protected by a hard shell known as a carapace. These turtles love to spend their time underwater and are down there for up to five hours at a time before needing to come up for air. Unfortunately, green sea turtles, along with most sea turtle species, are now considered endangered because of loss of nesting beaches, hunting, and pollution in the oceans. Green sea turtles often end up eating plastics in the oceans as they mistake it for food. This plastic can lead to internal injuries or bleeding that can kill the turtles. Just one piece of plastic is enough to kill a sea turtle, and it is estimated that around 50% of sea turtles have eaten plastic in their lifetimes. Sometimes, green sea turtles get caught in the plastic or fishing nets and end up drowning as they cannot come up for air. In order to save these gentle giants, we all have to play our part in reducing the amount of waste that ends up in our oceans. By sorting our garbage and reducing, reusing, and recycling our plastics, we can decrease the amount of waste we create. Word of the day.
Assalamualaikum Baji, what's your name? Waalaikum salam, my name is Amna Sheikh. Why is recycling so important for the environment? Recycling is so important for the environment because as humans, we create so much waste and so much plastic waste especially. And a lot of people don't know that with this plastic waste, what we can do is recycle it. Per day worldwide, we create 3.5 million tons of plastic. So that means 270,000 big garbage trucks. Now that's a lot of plastic waste, I'm sure you can imagine, right? So by recycling, we can reduce that plastic waste and we can make, it, make sure we're recycling it rather than putting it in the garbage. How can we recycle the garbage at home? Basically, your first step to recycling the garbage at home is making sure that you have the proper waste disposal system. So having a compost bin, a recycling bin, and a garbage bin. Basically, the compost means to take the natural, the, the material that are natural, and put it right back into the environment. And recycling means to reuse and repurpose this, uh, these recycling materials so that they can be used once again, rather than having to put them in the garbage and destroy our environment. What are the common mistakes we make while sorting our garbage? While sorting our garbage, a lot of the common mistakes we make is first of all making sure or, or not actually um, reading the labels on our materials that we're throwing away. So if there is a material that can be recycled or can be composted, a lot of the times people tend to compost or people tend to put them in the garbage. For example, um, water bottles, plastic water bottles, people put them in the uh, garbage opposed to the recycling when they can put them in the recycling so that can, they can be reused and repurposed. But we don't tend to do that. We should educate ourselves and make sure that we're not actually putting things in the garbage when they don't belong there. How can we make a Jama events green? So basically, by making sure we're allocating our waste in the proper places, we can make our Jamaat events green. So that means using a compost, a recycling, and a garbage. And whatever does not go in the compost and the recycling can go in the garbage. And it doesn't have to be a lot of waste either. It can be very little because we can compost and recycle so much. Is it actually a nurse? Like the nurse? So it's not actually a nurse, like ones that we'd see in a hospital. It's just the name for the shark, but you're actually sitting on the bottom of the tanks. There, that is, that's the nurse shark that you were talking about, exactly. So you'll notice that there's some fish right near the back of the nurse shark. And what they're doing right there is actually cleaning up little bits of bacteria or debris. But yeah, so the nurse shark will just sit there and lay there and the little fish will uh, clean Wait, it. Wait, but um, like, won't the shark I mean, the fish won't be like feeling good because they're taking the bacteria away. So it's bad bacteria for the shark, but good bacteria for them. Oh. Yeah, so they're just giving it a little clean, cleaning up all the little debris. All right, above us, you'll see the yellow snappers, and these are schooling fish. So they're actually hanging out together, and they kind of work as one unit. So they're all searching for food together. What's that sound? Jellyfish have existed longer than sharks. Speaking of sharks, someone told me sharks don't even have bones. Let's just wait a minute. How will we know that's true? Well, that's why I'm here. My name's Anthony and I'm an aquarist here at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. Uh, we have over 450 different species of animals inside this aquarium. And we're gonna be exploring three of the biggest ones, our jellyfish, our sharks, and our rays. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. So this is our dangerous lagoon. This is a saltwater tank, and all the species inside here are from the Atlantic Ocean, besides two. And one of them is to your right, that's our green sawfish. Uh, they come from the uh, Indonesian waters. Everything else is Atlantic, including the big sand tigers, our sand bar sharks, and our nurse sharks just sat down there. We have three species of the sharks inside the tank. We also have two green turtles, which you might be able to see, called Spot and Chewy. There are two females, and they live, uh, came from the Caribbean. There are smaller fish. We have some yellow snappers. We have some pork fish. Um, we have some grunts. These guys come all the way from the Caribbean up to the Atlantic Ocean. Our sand tiger sharks, we have 10 of them in here at the moment. We have six females and four males. They love to eat fish, and we actually feed them three times a week. For that reason, they don't eat the other fish inside our tank because they're so full, so hungry. And you can see they're a very lazy shark. These guys love to uh, hang around in sandbanks or coral reefs or shipwrecks. 
and they usually just coast around together, but they're a very smart animal, and they've been known to hunt together. I've heard one of you guys say that they don't have bones, and that's true. These guys are made of cartilage, the same stuff that you have in your ears, gives you that nice rigid feeling. They can get very big though, even though their bones are very light and they're not made of, uh, not made of the same calcium bones we have, but cartilage, they can get up to 400 pounds and reach up to 10 feet in length. So the guys we got here are pretty much full grown and they're as big as they're gonna get. They've known to live up to 40 years inside the aquarium. As you can see past right now, we've got our rough tail stingray. He's just coasting around. These guys also live for a very long time and they love to just coast the open waters. Uh, they're known to migrate up and down the Atlantic Ocean. This guy here, this is our tarpon. They love to hang around in big schools. Um, he's fully grown at the moment. We have four of those guys in there. Uh, you can find them often down in Florida sort of region. So these guys are our sand tiger sharks. They look very menacing, but they're not as dangerous as people make out. There's never been any fatal attacks on humans. In Australia, they actually call them ragged tooth sharks, and you can see their teeth are all over the place. They use them as almost fishing hooks to catch their prey. This point in their tunnel that we're at is one of the main points where the sharks will come together. They prefer to feed at night and are actually nocturnal hunters, and this cave here is one of the little places they like to hide out. As I was saying, they don't eat any of the fish in the aquarium because we feed them so well. They eat the same type of food, the fish, that other people eat in restaurants. They eat uh, salmon, mackerel, squid, herring, anything they can get their hands on, really. That's good nutrition for them. What's that animal like? So this animal here is one of our biggest animals in the aquarium. This is our green sawfish. This guy's our female. She's just uh, swimming around at the moment. And you see that big saw sharp uh, weapon at the front of their nose. They use that for de uh, defense and also for hunting. They can swing it back and forth like she's doing now in the ground and she can catch fish and uh, that's how they also defend themselves from the predators. So are sharks fish or mammals? Good question. Uh, all the species we have inside the aquarium are either fish or reptiles. The only reptiles we have are our two green sea turtles. Sharks are actually fish. Uh, we don't have any mammals inside the aquarium. Uh, Mammals you might see in, the, in other aquariums would be dolphins, uh, some type of whales, belugas, those type of animals. But just here we have fish. Yep. I went to Marinon and I saw dolphins doing yep. tricks. So that's a mammal. Uh, they use tricks inside aquariums as a type of enrichment to keep them occupied. It gives them something to do. It's a, it's a teaching ability. Next time on Destination Next. As soon as something touches it, they inject a small spike into the victim and that creates a toxin inside their skin or their scales of the animal. And that's what causes the pain. You also see these guys here that are interested in looking at you and want to play. These are our cow nose rays. Jazakwa for watching. We hope that you liked our episode today. You can also get creative and share with us your pictures and drawings for a chance to win Destination Next souvenir. Also, tell us where you'd like to explore next on Twitter and Instagram at MTA Canada. We look forward to hearing from you. A new destination, what fascination. We'll go exploring a new creation. See to feel our Travel around the world, see to fill our travel around the world, so we
here we go, a new destination, some inspiration, a little agitation, more complication, we'll push our minds for some formulation, we'll go exploring, a new destination, destination next.